Phase two, dig deeper. Done. It's over. I finished it. So phase one's done. Phase two's done. This is a recap of the last two weeks of phase two. Stick here. I'm going to break it down. Phase two, chalk it up. It's over and done. But now we get to chop up the last two weeks and maybe we can find something in here of the way that I felt, the things that I liked and didn't like, and my results that could possibly help you where you're at. Let's talk about it. Let's just start with results. Phase two, right there. There's day one, day 28, and then the end of phase two right there. You obviously can see that my body has changed body composition. There is definitely some more muscle. There is definitely some different size. I don't know that I'm bigger, although it does look that way. I don't know that I feel as I am bigger. I kind of almost feel as though I shrunk, to be honest with you. I feel like, huh, where did I lose size? But that picture doesn't appear to be as though I've lost any size. I feel like I look good. I feel like I, I am good. But then I put on clothes and I'm like, this is still not um, stretched out or as thick as maybe as I started. So body composition changes without a doubt. I've told you guys already, I started at 182. I am down to 174. 574. I think I may have hit 173 at moments. So I believe that lower weight is not because I was trying to cut calories, but I actually was. You can hear it in my voice. I came down with a little bit of the flu and I rested more. That turned into a priority to me because I just didn't have the energy to be highly focused on workouts or focused on eating. My entire focus over four or five days was rest. Even though I did what was required and got the workouts in, I wasn't about overeating. I wasn't about feeding with protein. I was more feeding the cold, right? Like that's where I was at. I was trying to get as much bone broth in. I was trying to get as much rest in. And and for those of you who don't believe a body at rest is a body at repair, which also gives you that ability to lose weight. Well, there you have it. You can see that I dropped a little bit more weight and I do believe that's because my recovery was that much more. Mind you, I don't feel that I look any smaller. I, I, I kind of feel optically that I look the same, if not bigger. I'm not trying to mislead you guys. Without a doubt, I'm ripped. I'm back into more of a lower body fat, I would say, ripped shape. And I do believe that that's because of everything that I've been doing over the last eight weeks and then having that body at rest and be like, oh, this is what recovery can really do to the body once you kind of match those up in a real perfect scenario. So having that double combination happen, well, you end up kind of looking ripped. That's it. Uh, I do want to say that consistency and, and making small changes, and I'm going to make a video on that. Like I only made small changes, you guys. I didn't make these big, elaborate. I'm going into a, a system that involved uh, eating foods that I don't normally eat, doing workouts I don't normally do, that were above my head, above my pay grade per se. That was not something that I did. I made small tweaks to places where I knew I could reduce some of my behaviors that were holding me back with my food while combining it with a really good high volume workout. And that's why I'm ending up where I'm at right now at eight weeks. I got four weeks to go and this should be really interesting to see where it ends up. Do I know if I'll be any more ripped? I have no clue. I don't even know that I want to be. I just want to see where it ends up going. So it's not like I'm training for a show or I have this end all be all or I'm in this state where I'm in a system that I'm not going to be able to maintain as I go forward. And I'm going to talk a lot about that in the end, which means when I'm done with this program about how I didn't make those major shifts and those major changes to go into a hyper-focused system to be where I'm at. However, I believe in major shifts. I believe in big programs. I believe in hyper-focus. For some people that want to get to a place, I just know that that's not what I had to do to get where I'm at. And I also know that for most people, you can't maintain that and that you're going to have to mentally be able to be in a position to understand what are you going to do next once you have finished a system that maybe above your pay grade that you can't maintain. And I don't mean that to be mean. I don't mean that you're not getting paid enough or or that it you know you're not smart enough to do it. You don't have enough time and experience underneath your belt to have those habits stick and stay. It's a very specific complicated system that you could be putting yourself in to get very specific results, which is awesome. I'm all for those kind of things in certain situations. I, in this situation, didn't have to do that. I made some very small tweaks and it looks like I'm getting some very big returns. Let's jump right into the workouts. What do I think about them? It's time under tension. 
I don't like them. I'm not one of those people that wants to do anything slow. I love intensity. However, I do understand that there is a place for them. I didn't get injured at all. That's one of the biggest benefits of time under tension is understanding you get to move less weight slower. What happens with that? You have less ability to get injured. What a great thing. I proved it with research. Four weeks of time under tension, I didn't get injured and I got great results. I'm just gonna keep saying this. Phase one, phase two, different swelling. I just didn't get the swole and the pump at the end of my workouts in phase two that I got in phase one. More volume, different style of workout, different stress on central nervous system, on muscles. There's just a lot that was different from phase one to phase two. I had to be open to understanding that there was going Going to be a different feeling. You can't take and change the modalities of the workouts and then think that you're going to feel exactly the same way that you would doing other workouts. So I was open to that change and I was unfamiliar with that change as far as I don't know what it's going to produce. So therefore my expectation of being let down of it not being as swole or me being as tired or, or as hungry or whatever it could be, I was okay with feeling exactly that way as I went through and got done with phase two. I don't know, it's just me. I would have liked to see phase one, phase two combined. I would have liked to see some giant sets on some days and then some eccentric on other days. Or I would have liked to see eccentric, you know, in the first half of the workout and giant sets in the second half of the workout, thus making it a four week phase one, phase two. And then you could move into a second phase, which would be this phase. But you know what? It's three phases, 12 weeks, and that would be one of the push facts that I would have. 12 weeks is a major commitment. It's not something that is going to be easy for you to go, all right, I'm in it. 12 weeks. It's not that difficult. You're going to get tested. And I have been tested throughout it for birthdays to dinners, to hanging out with friends, to alcohol, to just my own personal wanting, you know, something that wasn't on the menu at that particular time, like cookies, sweets, pizza, like it's not that I still don't want it. I just knew that I wanted a result more than I wanted that particular item at that time. I did hear this conversation while going through it. And it was like on both ends of the spectrum that I'll share with you right here. One of the things that I did hear while going through phase two was a five, five, five questioning that you could ask yourself. It had to do with five seconds, five minutes, five years. And you could kind of put that into however you wanted to do. You could say to yourself, would you want that food, that drink, that beverage in five seconds, in five minutes, in five years, would it matter to you? Would it matter to you? And, and then it could be like, what type of effect would that food have on you in five seconds, in five minutes, in five years from now? And would you regret it? Would you regret having this food and beverage five seconds from now, five minutes from now, five years from now? And when I started to ask myself kind of those questions, I started to look at every situation and obstacle that I was pushing myself towards was, it would matter to me if I didn't complete the program on point. The commitment that I made to the program, to myself, and what I wanted to be able to achieve, it would matter to me in five years. It would matter to me if I stopped my commitment to myself and to you guys if I didn't do the program the way that I said I would do it. No cookies, no sugar, no processed foods, no pizza, no alcohol. I said that, that was commitment to me. And would that matter to me in five seconds? Probably, maybe a little. In five minutes, uh, in five years, yeah. When I'm telling the story that I was doing certain programs and I was up against, I was in a situation where I made a commitment and that could be any commitment of mine. Will that matter to me in five years? Yes, that's why I always talk about loyalty, trust, and talking from honesty, five years from now, that's still going to bother me that I didn't uphold my word to you. My dad has always said to me, there's two things I can't take from you, your education and your word. And your word is something that you can give away. So I refuse to do that. And that five, five, five really helped me push through and make those decisions that were important to me, whether it was food or our workout or how I would feel about my own health in five years. And I know that some people will say a workout's not that big of a deal and you can just let it go, Mike. And it, that might be for you. It's not for me and that just happens to be my choice. And the last thing I'll say as far as the workouts, I'm glad it's over. 
four weeks doing the same thing over and over with absolutely no progressions, no changes in sets and reps. It just gets a little daunting. And I'm just was at the point of like, I'm ready to change. I knew that in week four, what I needed to be able to do. I mastered the system, collect data in week one, and then apply that data in weeks two and three, and then in four, test that and try to go up in weight. That's the way that I'm doing the program. I mastered that. I went into week four and obviously I was able to up my weights, challenge myself, and it felt really good to be strong and not to feel under the gun. That, and that in each week I would have to continuously be challenging myself to be better. I knew that that was week four and I would test it at that point. I'm happy that it's over. I think four weeks is that point to transition into a new phase, especially when we're not changing out reps and sets to create different volumes. Heading into phase three, new sets, new reps, new volume, new stress on muscles. It should be an interesting last four weeks. Nutrition, still on maintenance. Not much has changed at all. I became very repetitious. I know that uh, I started to struggle a little bit and wanting to find new things to eat because I'm like, oh, I'm eating the same things over and over and over. Boredom is starting to set in. I'm on my maintenance calories and on moments where I'm hungry at all. If I find myself wanting to snack, wanting to add, needing more, if I'm low on energy, I adjust on the fly. It's not like, oh, I just up my whole week. If I'm hungry, I'm going with more protein. If I felt as though I was tired, carb. I'm just going to carb load and I'm not going to worry about the effects. I didn't think that it was going to be that big of a deal with the results that I was already having and getting. And I thought that one meal, one snack that could change my demeanor and the way that I felt or my ability to work out or recover wasn't going to make a big deal. And you know what? Look at the picture. I don't think it made a big deal at all with the way that I chose maintenance and then hungry, eat protein, low energy, eat carbohydrates. I do know that I need to make a video specific to what I'm eating and why, and as well as the supplements. That's going to be super key, especially to all my dudes out there that are sitting there going, what did you do? I did a bunch of stuff, you know, and that's what I just want to say until now that I was very regimented and have been regimented for the past eight weeks with the supplements that I take and the timing of my supplements, which goes back also into my nutrition. I was very diligent in some of the timing of my nutrition before I work out, after I work out, not eating after I ate dinner at night. I was very diligent. I'm focused, but I don't feel stressed. I think that's going to be one of the keys when you're looking at your nutrition. What's going to allow you to be focused, but not overwhelmed and stressed. So like I was saying, I will make a video of uh, a day in what I am eating so you guys can see that. And then I will also show you all of my supplements. The other thing with my nutrition at this stage I can look back on is that I'm really winning through consistency and willpower. I'm being tempted. I've got obstacles. I've got problems. I've got all the things that you guys have. They're just different, right? Like we all are going to be up against stress, overwhelm, tired, exhaustion, energy levels. We're just going to face the same things, but we're going to face them in different ways. I happen to feel that I'm winning my fight because of consistency and then willpower because I have the ability to say no and leave it at that. No. I don't have to explain to anybody why I'm not. I don't have to continue going on. No is a complete sentence to me. I don't want this. No, I'm done. I'm over it. I'm moving on. And with that 555 rule, I also know that, you know, in five seconds and five minutes, none of it's going to matter to me. I will have moved on. It's like a Twitter conversation to me. So if you are getting to a point or starting and you're watching this, you're like, yeah, and I want to start up and I want, I want to start my own journey. And this is, and if you're watching this and you're getting to that point where either you're in it, or you're thinking about getting involved in your own fitness journey, consistency is what's going to win for you. Combine that with willpower over time, and that's where you're going to win. Last thing I want to mention before going into phase three, I've done things a little bit differently than most people doing this program. I've taken it to the gym. Most people will do this at home, have dumbbells, follow the worksheets, follow Sean on the TV. I haven't done any of that. The only time I've watched Sean is while doing low impact, steady state cardio on my bike so I can understand what the moves look like when I see them on the worksheet. 
I'm taking them to the gym. I'm looking at the clock. I'm highly focused. It's been a good experience to be able to go into a gym with a training program and get after it. That's what I really truly enjoy. I don't enjoy follow along, but just because I'm not doing it that way doesn't mean you can't get the results that I'm getting. But I will say, you're not me, so don't expect to get my results. Be you and expect to get the results that you need to be able to get during the 12 weeks. That is why I've continuously leveraged worksheets with a trainer track. And I mean it, and when I say this, not the track that gets pulled from the follow along workouts. There's too much motivation. There's too much sidebar stuff. A pure trainer's track that allows anybody that needs to listen to it, who needs a little bit more help than I do, that can listen to it in their ears. The one caveat is that trainer track needs to be able to be played at the same time as your music. So trainer track that they can play their music over with worksheets that they can take to the gym, that they can track with. So maybe even an app, start to be able to build that. So Beachbody, if you want a bunch of dudes back in, using the platform, using your programs, I would say be very direct, be very simple, give the guys what they want. They want to plan, they want want to lift, they want very direct stuff, they want simple, easy, and then they want to move on. And that ends phase two. I'm looking forward to going into phase three. Aggressive overload, new volume, new reps, new sets, all new ball game. We'll be doing the same exact thing that we were doing before. Collect data in week one, learn and apply in weeks two and three, and then test it into week four. And then we'll end up and see what the 12 week program actually produced for me. I'm excited for the new stress, the new overload to leave eccentric movements in the past and get into phase three. If, if you have any questions, ask them down below. I think you can see from my previous videos that I answer pretty much, if not all of the comments and questions that happen down below, as well as if you could subscribe. It really does help the channel and it does push this video out to help other people get healthy and fit. Until then, I think we all know that we can think better, we can eat better, and we can move more. Stay well, be well.